This point, okay, is basically these last three. They're all the same god dang point. He, he betrayed his dad, he killed him, joined the military, killed people he wasn't supposed to kill, and he caused more damage and used a flare warhead. You mother chuckers, you, read the, you, you did the same thing three god dang times. I'm like, welcome guys to another CBR article discussion. It's been quite a while since the last time I did one of these. And that was actually for Lelouch because he made an article saying how he, 10 ways he ruins like ability. So now we have Suzaku receiving the same treatment. The poor guy has been fudged now for the second time by CBR. And I'm just curious to see what great arguments and points they're going to bring up from the story to argue 10 ways he ruins like ability. Now, the thing about Sasaki Kurugi before he begins his article is that he obviously was a very polarizing character. Most people don't like him because of how he, you know, deals with evolution, his actions. So there are definitely things he did that ruins like ability. But I'm curious to see if any of the ones that I'm thinking about are going to be mentioned here. Now, in fairness, if they make good points, I'll bring them up. You know, I'll I'll say, hey, that was pretty good, but you guys know how CBR works. They need to turn these things out like a factory. Little effort has gone into the research because they have to produce the next, the next article. That's just the way it is. It's been that way for a long time now. So I imagine this article is probably not going to be the greatest. Although, well, we'll, we'll see. But I'm, I'm, I'm holding my breath right now because like, I, I doubt the points they're going to make here are going to be good. Especially when in the past articles they've said a couple things about Saku Kurugi that I'm pretty sure were wrong or not wrong, but like showed a lack of understanding of the story. And I'm curious to see if this is going to be the same thing going forward with this article. And of course, there'll be others in the future I want to go over as well. Because they, they made a bunch in the last couple uh, months. There's like at least four or five that came out. And there's also ones that include Kogias in there as like an item on a list or something. Some of those I will mention are, I would put in not the greatest for a video because they are, they're kind of like staying, you know, no duh or very opinionated stuff that, I mean, I can go over it, but yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, let's get into the article of this video, which is Code Geass, 10 Ways Suzaku Ruined His Likeability. As a main antagonist force for Lelouch, Suzaku Kurugi stymied a lot of protagonist progress of the protagonist's progress throughout Code Geass. Yeah, he's based an antagonist, although at some points they do team up together. So that's pretty much accurate for 9% of the show. I can't argue that they weren't at each other's throat at uh, different points. It's actually funny because they didn't know they were fighting each other until much later on in the story. And it's because they didn't know they were fighting each other, it actually creates some more uh, fun tension scenes in the uh, in the anime. Continuing on here, though, Suzaku Kurugi was Lush V. Britannia's childhood friend. I believe that's spelled right. It looks wrong to me. But anyways, throughout the start of their friendship was a bit rocky. They became very close confidants. However, as they grew, their values grew apart, and Suzaku even betrayed his former friend. The rest of the series saw them wrestle with their duties, goals, and past relationships. Now, there's something they said betrayed his best friend... Or former friend. Um, I'm not a biggest fan of the way they were that. But I, I guess it's okay. That's more of a, a nitpick. Dezaku made a lot of enemies. Both in and in the series. As a main antagonist force. For Lelouch. Yes. Um, he made a lot of enemies. That's very true. Well to quote uh, Bismarck. You know, who can trust someone who constantly betrays everyone. So yes. That's very true. He stunned a lot of protagonist progress. Furthermore, he tended forward towards hypocrisy. Um, some elements, yes. There are multiple ways in which Saku Kurugi ruins like ability throughout Kogias. And let's see how they came up with those, uh, what their list is. By the way, they use, again, they always do this in articles. They pick up whatever the, whatever the like, subheading is, they use it again in the main, like, stuff. I don't know. I guess it's for SEO purposes or uh, who knows. Anyways, number 10. Lelouch said he was a spoiled child. Saku Kudarugi and Luch V. Britannia became friends when they were forced to live in close quarters due to a political predicament. Well, that's one way to put it, I guess. While the two did not get along at first, Saku thinking Lelouch was a spoiled and Lelouch thinking the same, they eventually became best friends. However, political circumstances, family complications, and emotional trauma sustained by the 
precarious situation, both Lelouch and Salaku's families were made um were made the two drift apart in later years. What? Political circumstances, family complications, and emotional trauma sustained by the precarious situations, both Lelouch and Salaku's family were made were made the drift to apart. Or it made that was really confusing. You could just say that those things drift them apart. You didn't have to like go further with it. And Suzaku's families? Um, oh, their family. I, I got it. Their families. Well, I guess if you consider Nelly and Lucia as a family, like Charles wasn't really involved. Actually, they were they were drifted apart. I guess they're talking about the whole political marriage thing between Nunnally and Genbu. If they're talking about that, then that's kind of true. But like, okay, it's a weird way to put it. Um, still fan or not have how Saku treated Lelouch at first, also with how quickly he betrayed Lelouch. Okay. We're at the first point, and I'm already pissed off. And I'll tell you why. The title says Lelouch said he was a spoiled child. The discussion here is about their first encounter. These are two different things. If you had said, title-wise, Suzaku was aggressive toward Lelouch. He abused him, attacked him, antagonized him when they were kids immediately without even listening to his point of view. Okay, you might have something there. But you said he, because Lelouch said he was a spoiled child. And then you point out, like, fans aren't happy how he treated Lelouch. Which fans? Got Guys, like, I've been reading Reddit posts for, like, several years now. I've looked at older posts from the, uh, Reddit, Facebook, even Quora. And when people complain about Sasaku, not many talk about how he treated Lucha when they were kids. That I'm aware of. So if you're going to say the fans were not happy, you're going to have to provide some kind of evidence to support said claim. You're not going to do that, of course, because no one's ever read his article to that point to question it. But... This is a site that claims that they do, they do fact checking. That's point one. Point two, you mentioned how quickly he betrayed Lelouch. I don't know what context you mean that in. Do you mean after Euphemia was killed by Lelouch? Or Lelouch killed Euphemia? To be more, I guess, direct with that sentence. Or are you saying that when they first met, he betrayed him? Even though they weren't even friends at that time. So betrayal isn't like something he could have done. The point is, like, this last sentence literally has nothing to do with anything. Arguably, none of this has anything to do with anything. I'm not sure why Zazaku being aggressive towards an outsider coming into his home that his family literally has problems with would be unreasonable. Didn't he state to Lelouch that, like, um, Bertain does a bunch of awful things, so he has an understandable reasoning for not liking him? And then Lelouch counters, like, yeah, but you guys are also equally bad. So they both, like, throw it at each other. So that's a pretty good point of contention. But I'm just confused what this has to do with Suzaku ruining his likability. Again, like, when people think about Suzaku ruining his likability, like this... I've never heard anyone discuss this scene, okay? I'll give the CBR people credit in that they found something so obscure that, like, no one ever talks about. In fact, when Lush does speak about their moments when they first met, he speaks about it with kindness and, and almost like that was a great moment. When he was thinking about meeting up with him in turn 17 about, you know, discuss saving Nelly because he was obviously worried for her life. He thought when they first met and he, he said like, he didn't say anything bad about that confrontation. He was, uh, for the most part. And even in the flashback itself in the picture drama, again, I didn't see anything like awful from it. Because, again, both sides clearly had valid points for being angry at each other. I'm probably putting more thought into this than CBR did. But the point I'm trying to make is I don't see how this particular situation that happened would have made Suzaku less likable. If you were a 10 and this is your number 10, you guys did not do your research on this. Because this is such low-hanging fruit, if that much. So let's um let's move on, but I'm... Very disappointed so far. But then again, what 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 should I expect? Oh my god, number nine. He turned loose to his father. This is just like their article they made. My first video, for, my first live stream, which was defending Suzaku Kurugi. This was the point on that article. It was like, he, he turned loose to his father. Like, 
fans didn't understand why he did this. You guys have doubled down on the same points. I swear. Did you just read that article and copy it? Because I, I, I don't know. Now I will say, I will say in defense, this is a moment that a lot of people did not like Saku for doing. Um, especially if you support the loose, which a lot of people do and still do, by the way. So this is definitely a point I will agree with. I'll see what their reasoning is, but just in the title alone, yes, a lot of people did not like Zaku after he turned in the loose. Now, if you speak or think objectively here, the action is defendable because Lelouch did kill Euphemia and Suzaku was understandably pissed off. And of course, he learned about Gias too, which also pissed him off. Again, there's so many like layers to it, to this. So, when you put that all into consideration, what he did wasn't, um, was not, how I put this, what he did was justified, even if you don't like the character. But for most people first watching the series, I can definitely see why you'd watch it and be angry at Zaku. But if you take a step back and you think about the show objectively, what he did there was justified. And I'll explain why as we read this beautiful paragraph. One of the many betrayals Zaku committed, and the first one, one of the many he committed, one of the many betrayals I've committed, the first one. Wouldn't you just say the first big betrayal Saku committed was against his former friend? Like, what? Okay, whatever. Was turning loose to the royal family. Well, see, here's the thing. I, I don't think that's what happened at all. It was just to Charles, not the whole family. As far as I know, the rest of the royal family did not know he was zero. Right? There's a part where, where Schneisel didn't know until turn 17. So no, it was not the whole royal family, it was just Charles. That's a pretty big difference because that's the difference between... There are several plot lines that pretty much relied on information that the royal family did not know who Lelouch was. So to say the family that he was turned into the whole family, that's incorrect. It was just to Charles. Let's... Let's be accurate here. I'm not saying it's a huge issue with this point, but again, due diligence for crying out loud. You're paid, for, you're paid to write these articles. In return, he wanted to ra be raised in rank, which seemed pretty heartless move to pull on an old friend, especially after Lush had all done for him. Oh my God, I'm going to lose it, but let's keep going here. While much of Lush and Saku's adult relationships centered around gaining the upper hand and then crushing their enemy, this was one of the most worst betrayals that Zaku committed in the series, and one of fans are... Are likely to forget. It's not one that I thought they said like this is what the fans are going to, are going to forget. If they had said that, I would start laughing because that destroys their whole point. And it's not one the fans are likely to forget. Okay, let's talk about this for a moment. Okay, let's be objective here. Who betrayed who? Lelouch used Kiosk on Saku to live, which pissed him off because he wanted to die. That's a whole another element to his character. And Lelouch killed Euphemia, which was Saku's love. They were probably going to get married. Who, who, who the heck knows? We'll never, we'll never know, but that was my assumption. And he lied to Zaku the whole time about who he was and his objective at the whole, at the whole time, right? So, Alush had, like, he did three things against him. What I don't like about this point of view, and I've, I've stated this in the past, I like Lush's character. I like some of the things that, that, that Lelouch does. The problem is some people can't look past that to criticize his character and show that he has flaws, to show he makes mistakes. And I don't know why that's the case. But when it comes to this situation here, Lelouch betrayed Zaku way before he betrayed him. In fact, Zaku, it's almost worse because there are certain scenes in the story where Zaku is doing things to Lelouch without even knowing what his real intentions are, whereas Lelouch didn't know about him. So it's that's not a fair statement to make because Lelouch betrayed Zaku. Okay, when they say like, after all Lush had done for him, that is such crap. That is such a victim blaming. That that's garbage. Okay, because the Lush did some nice things for him, therefore Zaku has to be happy with the fact that he killed his love, his life, lied to him, really used Gias to control his will. Seriously, do I even have to explain this? Maybe I do. I don't know. But let's um, let's move on. Uh, number eight, he hid behind the landslide. What? Okay. Suzaku piloted experimental mech. 
called or nightmare frame called landslide i like how they say or or nightmare frame maybe they, they've seen my videos where I, I criticize them for not using the word nightmare frame it's not experimental mech or nightmare frame it's experimental seventh generation nightmare frame called the lancelot at least say the correct term like you're you obviously put time to think about what to write here and you still got it wrong okay whatever let's just whatever it's not even, that's not even the, that's not even the major point here i'm just you know, we're already eight points in. I, I, it's hard for me to get through this stuff. Continuing on, though. And using it, he terrorized enemies, including Lush, although Lancelot was never expected to be so successful. And it was a happy coincidence for both Britannia and Saku that it worked out so well. Yeah, see here, Britannians with, with one T and uh, two N's. And then they spelled it... I know, I'm such a dick. But they spelled it... Where was it? No, not there. Um, yeah, here, they spelled it wrong. How do you manage... How do you fudge that up? I don't know. Control F? Like, what? whatever. Again, I'm only harsh about this stuff because they're paid to write these articles, okay? That's what I'm harsh about. And there's editors. It's a whole team of people, right? That's why I, I get really angry when I uh, see stuff like that. But back to the points. So, I said it was, it was happy coincidence for both the Britannians and Saka that it worked out so well. The Lancelot put a wrench in Lucius' plans and made it more difficult to achieve his goals. But even for viewers who are not loose defenders, the Lancelot made Zaku less popular as he gave him more potential for violence, especially his delusional Lord of Britannia was harmful in the first place. Okay, lots to discuss here. Number one, the real point they're making is that it made him do stuff like he was potential for violence and he was delusional for his loyalty to Britannia. Okay, delusion to loyalty to Britannia is like a whole nother thing. That's the only point you're making here. Everything else is irrelevant. Everyone used a Nightmare Frame in Code Chaos. You could literally argue that Lelouch hid behind the Gwain, or he hid behind the, the Burai, Colin hides behind the Gurin, etc. What point are you making? They're in a battlefield. or They're on a battlefield. They're not in a battlefield. You get on the battlefield. They're all in Nightmare Frames fighting each other. Like, I don't understand what the point is. This is, this is how the story, like... I don't understand, like, I'm trying to, like, my brain is, like, unable to comprehend why this is a valid critique on Saku Kurugi. I mean, again, there are so many things you can bring up about why he was like ability. So far, the last point, uh, this one here, there is some validity to it. This one, absolutely not. This is so stupid to me. It's like before, they said, like, they said that the last one was, like, OP or something, even though, or no, they said the last one, he had the strongest nightmare frame, which I already proved is not true because the Gwen was stronger than the Lancelot. The Gurren was equal to the Lancelot, and then even in the next show, it wasn't the strongest either because the Gurren was better. You could argue the seven generation nightmare frames that the, that the Knights around used were equivalent to it. So no matter how you look at it, it wasn't the strongest nightmare frame. Now that's that's a red herring. That's not what they're discussing here. I'm just saying that I, I don't know what they're saying actually. That's what I'm trying to point out. Like the whole thing never expected to be successful. I don't know if that was ever discussed in the story. All I know about the Lancelot is that. They couldn't find a divisor for it, to quote Lloyd. I never heard them saying, like, it wasn't supposed to be successful. Maybe that's a, a headcanon or some visual novel, but I don't recall anyone saying it wasn't successful. They just couldn't find someone to pilot it, that I understand. I don't, like, maybe they're trying to say the way he used the Lancelot against the, the Britannia, not Britannia, the Black Knights or the JLF forces. Maybe that's why they're upset with this. But again, it says hid behind the Lancelot. It doesn't say he ruined Lucius' plans with the Lancelot. So I have to question what are they talking about in this in this point here. It, it's stupid because they make their attentions clear with the last sentence about his delusional loyalty to Britannia and was harmful in the first place. Okay. Like, fine. Separate point. And the only thing about more potential for violence, this is a war story. What, what are you talking about? And more potential for violence? Guys, Tezaku used a nightmare frame to stop violence, okay? Regardless of how you feel about his beliefs overall, but how he wanted to change the world in the world of Kogias. When he went to battle, he tried to disarm as many nightmare frames as he could, at least in R1. He could have killed Tamaki so many times, Ogi so many times, Lelouch so many times, right? He doesn't do that. He's trying to stop the conflict. Now, when R2 rolls around, especially towards, um, well, actually the beginning, he starts to do more killing. But I'm not sure if they're going to be talking about that. The whole idea about like potential for violence, though, just to get back to that point, 
it's a war story. I mean, he fought someone by the ghetto who attacked him. He like he defends himself. I I don't understand why this is a problem. And again, I have never seen anyone make this complaint about him before. I have to question how they do research. They just grab a bunch of things and come up with ideas that don't make any sense. Like I don't understand how they even came up with this point. I'm wrapping my brain around this, and I probably shouldn't be because I again I don't think they put any thought into this particular point. I just don't see what this has to do with anything. But let's move on. Let's move on. Number seven, he killed his father. When Britannia invaded, the Jap uh, and invaded and Japan was put in the worst possible position, Suzaku did not see an end to the violence. At least he did not see an end with his father in charge. Well, it's the same thing. Like, that's that's the point. That, that's, like, whatever. That's, like, semantic at this point. But still, yeah, that's, that's like, obviously... So he did what he thought he had to do. He used three he's in that one, yeesh. And killed his father to weigh the same more innocent lives. However, after killing his father, he was racked with guilt. He also weirdly joined the Britannian. Britannians already made things worse on innocent civilians he originally wanted to keep safe. Okay, I'm going to sell a broken record here. Same point as before. This sentence here. This is the, the point they're trying to make. This has nothing to do with anything. All these damn titles are such um, distractions and almost clickbait crap within themselves because this killed his father is not even mentioned here at all. He didn't, they don't say why killing his father made him not likable. What they did say was joining the Britannian military was the problem. So just say that in your title. What is so complicated about this? Okay, all right. Well, let's, let's discuss the points though that, that are being raised here. Um, the father thing, they don't give any arguments for it. Personally, after learning that they were going to marry off Gambut, not only for political reasons, I don't really care about much about the guy. He apparently, he was, I guess, loved by a lot of other people. For example, I believe Nagisa talked about him and, and Toto as well. They weren't had about his his sacrifice, but they did um, they did respect him. A lot of people in the military and the family respected him. So there there is that to consider. I don't know if killing him makes me hate him more or less. I don't care either way because we don't know much about Gambu to begin with. The only thing I know about him are negative stuff. So there is that. Now let's move on to the next point. He joined the, the he weirdly enough joined the Britannian military. Well, see, if you watch the picture drama, they actually explain what happened. Basically, when his father died, he couldn't find Toto, Mrs. Zaku, by the way, as a kid. So Taizo Kiraha told him to join the Britannian military. This is a kid, okay? He doesn't understand all the stuff. He, he's, he's going off what the adults tell him to do, which makes sense. He's not, he's a, um, I think he's like 10 years old at this point. So he was told to go to the military by people he trusted in his own, uh, the people he trusted, the, the adults, I guess you could say, like Taizo. So it wasn't weird, okay? He was told to do this and he, as a child, accepted this, all right? So that's, that's one thing. He also explained his reasonings too, again. Not weird. He planned it out. Um, I don't know how it made anything worse for the innocent civilians, considering that Suzaku, when he went to conflicts, he did end the fighting, okay? For the most part. So I don't know how that made things worse. If you're going to make a statement like that, you said arguably, right? So what's the argument? How did he make things worse by joining the Britannian military when he specifically stopped many huge conflicts down the road, especially in, uh, in turn eight when he spared a million people? I always reference that one all the time because that shows an example of where Hizaku saved people from dying, right? So if you're going to make a statement saying he caught, he made things worse, you'd have to go through the entire story, go to each conflict, and tell me why Hizaku's appearance in there made things worse for the civilians he was trying to protect. If you can make that point clear to me, then, or if you can argue that, then we might have something here. When Britannians have killed people in the story, Suzaku wasn't usually involved in those things, except for the first episode, or the first three episodes, that, that whole conflict in the Shinjuku ghetto. But besides that, most of the conflicts that involved mass murder of innocent people, Suzaku isn't like they're shooting at them, right? He's not even aware of these type of things. So you got to tell me a situation where a told Suzaku, we're going to kill innocent people, civilians, by the way, not, not soldiers like in Port Yokozuka with the JLF, actual innocent civilians. Tell me a situation where that happened, where Sokka was like, you know what, let's make it happen. If you can point out one of those to me, then you might have an argument. And maybe there's a case like that. I don't remember the top of my head that actually happened in the story. But you don't even 
do your due diligence and put that in there. So, in a long rant here, nothing stated about this point is accurate. It's it's more crap. I mean, we've, we're at seven. One point is valid. The rest are not. I, I can't wait to see what we go with next. And again, this is repeat from their other article. You guys couldn't even do anything creative. All the time. You made two fact lists about C2 and both were crap compared to mine. I'm not some special person. I'm just saying like, I actually just put some time into it and used, you know, my thinking cap. And I was like, hey, I can come up with some really cool things about C2 that are not just Wikipedia searches. Anyhow, enough flexing. Let's move on. He forsaked Japan. Um, in what way? I'm curious to see what they mean by that. Suzaku's whole reason for killing his father was because he wanted to spare the Japanese lives. We want to end the fighting too. So it's like, a, I guess those two go hand in hand. Let's just be clear on the, on the motivations. It was to end the fighting, which would save people's lives. Okay, there's, there's a two part to that. He thought that if his father kept going on the path he was headed down, all innocent lives would be lost and Japan would be completely destroyed. However, once pretend took over, Saku's actions made no sense. Um, okay. Before we read the last paragraph, shouldn't this one here have been listed in under this section? Right? Because this is about killing his father. You see why this is such a, um, a crap show? And they can always go back and edit these articles, right? There's nothing to stop them. These are not, like, set in stole, uh, stone. When you make a video on YouTube, you're kind of screwed because that's it. You can't go back and change the video. But articles are flexible. You can always go back and make changes in the future. I'm going to be doing that at some point with some of mine. But I'm just confused. Why didn't they put this point here? Uh, next point. However, once Britannia took over, Sadako's actions made no sense. I, I don't know what they mean by that because if you think about the chain of events right or series of events Suzaku basically forced Japan Japan surrender to Britannia so by him killing his dad and sparing the lies Britannia took over it was like a one thing led to the other so his actions did make sense because he basically wanted to surrender to Japan that was his actions so I don't know what you're talking about they literally led to it I, I, it's cause and effect. I don't un, I, I, I don't understand what you mean by that. If you want to argue because Britannia killed Japanese people and continue to kill Japanese people, therefore his actions made no sense. No, that would mean his actions were worthless or they didn't achieve what he was wanting, to, what he was trying to accomplish. But no, his actions didn't make sense because that's literally what happened. Like, Britannia only took over because Suzaku killed his father. He wasn't trying to help Japan win the war. They couldn't win the war, guys. Well, let's like get this clear here. They could not win the war. What they had to do instead was to force Japan to surrender. His dad wouldn't surrender. He called do or die resist. It was like literally in the show. Oh my God. Also, nitpick here, but like TBS, really guys, you couldn't get the footage and grab an image from the footage itself. If that's not laziness with a Google searching, I don't know what to tell you. But my God, I'm so pissed off here because this is such, this is wrong. I'll write wrong. Well, let's continue on though. Um, he was firstly loyal to Britannia and committed horrendous acts of violence, many of which killed countless civilians he claimed to protect. What instance are you talking about? The flood of warhead that was against his will. He didn't even know that was happening. When did he kill innocent civilians? You have to explain when this happened. I can tell you when he saved civilians. You can't just say stuff without quantifying it. In the end, um, oh wait, to claim protect we didn't kill his father, and then he chose Britannia over Japan. Okay. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'm trying to be like, not sophomoric here, but these are such sophomoric ideas, I feel like if they're, if they're not going to try, why should I? Okay, let's try to just, let's go over this again, okay? As far as I know, Suzaku has not killed innocent people, civilians. That I know of, besides the flay of warhead, which again was out of his control. If he's killed anybody, it was an accidental thing through battle. Okay, if we're gonna go if we're gonna be honest about that, be objective here. They don't point out anything, so is what it is. It is what it is. He committed horrendous acts of violence, many of which, again, many like none. What horrendous acts of violence are you talking about besides the flay of warhead? Are you sure not confusing him with Lelouch, who actually did commit horrendous acts of violence? You know, like, Naita, <laughs> and that, that was a fun one. The Gias or a Massacre, ooh. <laughs> the, 
that wasn't too great. Killing Katase with the, the Sakuridite. Ooh, that was not good either. You know, I mean, like, but here's the here's the problem with all this, right? It says he forsake Japan. That was the point they're trying to explain here. Let me let me just state this, right? If you want to argue he forsake Japan, discussing killing innocent civilians when you said you weren't going to is irrelevant to this point. That is a whole nother thing you could talk about. If you want to say he killed innocent civilians when he claimed he wasn't supposed to, go ahead. There's no argument to be made because you have no proof. You didn't bring up anything. You're just saying things out of your butt. But sure, there you go. What you should have said here was he killed innocent civilians. This is another time where you put like the wrong title. Now, let's get to the point they are making and let's argue it out, okay? Did he forsake Japan? Yes and no. Because he wanted to take over Japan as an item one. He just didn't think Japan could ever be truly free working within the system. Instead, he figured, look, these are the way things are. I'll work within it. I'll become charter of Japan and I'll free them as a uh, my own nation, right? That that's what he wanted to do. Okay, did he forsake Japan, like give everything for them? I can't think of a time where he did that. Some people claim he did, right? Some people claim that he became the you know the, the a knight of the nation that conquered Japan, so therefore he forsaked it. That's a little hard to say because again he wanted to become knight of one so he could take over Japan. To say he forsake Japan is a very strong term. If you want to say he never tended to free Japan, okay, you might have some point to make there. That might be something valid. Either way you look at it, though, this point is not relevant. The, 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 the paragraphs themselves are not relevant to the title. This article sucks monkey balls. Let's move on. Number five, lets his guilt consume him. Part of the reason why Sasaki was so quick to join the Britannians and their military was that he was consumed by the guilt of killing his father. However, by allowing this guilt to consume him, he ended up making his father's death pointless and caused widespread damage he originally tried to stop. The guilt he had over killing his father followed him constantly throughout the series. He joined the military because of it. However, counterproductive that might seem joined the military eventually like, 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 sorry, I read really fast because that's, that's, that's how the paragraph uh, sends it is phrased. It's so like, there's no breaks here. He joined the military because of it. However, counterproductive that might seem and join the military and let him to do terrible things like flying to Flea. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Um, first of all, just as a side note, consume him. No one ever talked about this being a problem with uh, Sasako's character. I don't think anyone's mentioned how the, the guilt part consumed him was a, an issue people didn't like. I know it's been brought up in certain videos. I won't say the name of one, but you know what I'm talking about. But generally speaking, I don't know why that makes him not likable it actually gives him a lot of character development it makes him more relatable we all have things that we're guilty about that drives our actions so i don't know why that's a problem and that it gives him depth but well, let's put that aside this point okay is basically these last three they're all the same god dang point he he betrayed his dad he killed him joined the military killed people he wasn't supposed to kill and he caused more damage and used a flare warhead you mother chuckers, you read, the, you you did the same thing three god dang times. I'm like, holy balls. The th same three points are all the same one. You could just summarize it in like one sentence. He used his guilt of killing his father to join the military that hurt people he was trying to not hurt. In CBR-like fashion. They stretched this out to three. Oh my god. The Flay Warhead has nothing to do with anything. Because again, Suzaku had no control over it. You have, you've said three times in this article, three times, they caused more damage than he was trying to stop. And I have said repeatedly, can you please tell me in this article, or yeah, in this article, what are you talking about specifically? What did he do that caused more damage than he was trying to stop? Because every Zaku did, whether you like it or you absolutely hate it, was focused on ending the conflict, ending the violence, okay? So people would not die all right everything he did was to stop the conflict i can't recall a time where zaku literally jumped in to start something that i know of in the eu i think he was helping them fight against the uh well european forces right so was he starting stuff there maybe but again that was a military campaign that wasn't innocent civilians that he was doing so like i i but it's a war story. It's like, like, 
you know what's also confusing too is, I'm, is my brain's trying to like boot up and try to understand this. How does this specifically relate to Suzaku when everyone I'm sure on some level has similar ideas to him? Even Lou said like we went into do this whole thing to not hurt innocent civilians and they start hurting innocent civilians. Yeah, I, I, like everyone, I think you could put this point to like anyone else. I don't know why this is a specific Suzaku thing. I understand he like didn't want to hurt anyone or kill anyone so he left. Like he joined the military to stop the violence and they're saying he caused more damage because of it. Like, I, I don't, I'm not sure what they're talking about. I know in turn 20 he ranted about how like he just wants to stop him from fighting and it never stopped. But that wasn't because of him. See, that's the thing, right? If you want to say his goal was never going to happen because humans are humans, fair enough. But if you're going to say he specifically escalated conflicts, I have to wonder which one you're referring to because I'm thinking of all the major times in R1 and R2 where Saku gets involved. Notice how it's after the battle gets started, right? Except for, again, in the EU. He's never the guy who, like, wants to start the battle. He comes in when it's already happening. He's sent in, right? He's always sent in to deal with a conflict. He's not sent in to start a conflict. That's why this is so confusing to me. Because you're making it seem like he's instigating and causing more damage. Zaku literally never, never does that in the story. And the Flare War thing, you go go fud yourself. Because this has been, like, just watch the story. And you would know that's crap. And they got to discuss the military thing. He had no other option at the time. He literally told Colin, oh my god, remember that part when the last episode where he's like, what about people who have to join the system? What choice do they have, okay? Suzaku had no choice to join the system. That was the point he was trying to tell Colin, okay? Just watch that episode. Watch, okay, whoever wrote this article, watch turn 20 and final turn. If you're still confused as to Suzaku's motivations, I don't know what to tell you. Stop writing articles if you don't get it at that point. Finally, a valid point to an extent. Number four, he was too loyal to the Imperial family. I don't know about too loyal, but sure. One of the biggest mysteries in Kogia is the question of why Saku, the son of the former Japanese Prime Minister, would take it upon himself not only to surround two Britannians, but also to join the military force that was known for destructive capabilities. Okay, fudge you guys. Don't say destructive capabilities. Say it's racist, um, imperialistic nation, okay? Be more macro and direct about why the military force is bad. Destroying lots of people is such a, like, everyone in a force, a nation would do that. That's how they're surviving, right? All the world powers, the EU, the Chinese Federation, they all have powerful weapons of destruction capabilities. The only timeline that actually matters in the story is the Nightmare Frames and the Flea Warhead. Both of whom were not as serious as they were in the main part of the story once Zaku joined them. The Nightmare Frames were very early in production. There was no Flea Warhead. So let's just get that crap out of the way. This is the, you know what, I'll about to come with these guys, but we're already back to the same thing. Why would he do this? 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 Uh, to, like, for the 15 god dang time. He had no choice in the matter. He made that clear several times in the anime. He had no choice, okay? Let's continue on, though. Even more confusing is why Saka would be so loyal to the Britannian cause. Oh my god! How are you guys this stupid? You wrote B B R T A A I N A S. Then you wrote B-R-T-T-A-N-A-I-N. Okay, guys, I understand if it's like the first part of the article and the last part, okay, you you know, you can't really see the paragraphs. It's the next sentence. Oh my God. Now, that's not nitpicky. That's unacceptable. The next sentence, you didn't even, like, wow. Did like five different people write this thing? Ugh, yeesh. I'm telling you, we live in a, world, a weird time where people just want to keep producing, 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 and not like, I know I just said they're producing. That's, that's the world start to come, come out. But that's kind of the point. See, you, you keep going, 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 and you don't actually think about what you're doing. It's, it's, oh my God. Even more confusing is why Saka would be so loyal to the Britannian cause. He betrayed his, his best friend for them. He destroyed countless civilian lives for them. When did he kill civilian lives? Oh my God. He went to war. He killed probably Black Knight members. He killed other enemies, uh, enemies that he had to. But in the early on the story, he didn't kill anyone. In fact, when I did my kill count for R1, I was doing some more, not R1, uh, the kill count for my video on the top Nightmare Frame pilot statistically. So Zaku doesn't kill anyone for the longest time in the first season. It's only in the second season on where he starts killing people. And when he kills people, it's not civilians. It's soldiers, right? The battlefield. Jesus Christ. Um, he even killed Lelouch. He even killed Lelouch for them. He even killed Lelouch for them. What the fudge? No, he didn't. Lelouch died for the Zero Requiem. Wh what? 
Anyways, I don't even know. However, his motivation for doing his things seemed flimsy at best. Flimsy at best. You mean how he justifies actions by stating several times over and over and over and over again why he wanted to do this? Flimsy? You love, this article loves to throw out big buzzwords. Flimsy. Horrible. You know, like, do you, do you quantify these things? No, of course not. How is motivation for these things flimsy? Are you saying he never explained them because he did explain them? I don't know. This this is so bad. Let's actually address the the elephant in the room when it comes to the, the loyalty to the Imperial family. Because in CBR's horrible fashion, they do bring up a, a valid point. A lot of people don't like the fact that Zaku was too loyal to the family. He was very keen on helping out Cornelia. He sided with Charles. Obviously, he was close to Euphemia. So he definitely had a soft spot for the royal family. And people have always wondered why the royal family. Because, again, joining the military of Britannia and being loyal to the family are two separate things, right? But let's try to, to address if this makes him look bad or not. On some respect, yes. Some people say he's a bootlicker for the royal family. Sure. Uh, on some end, uh, it, the way I looked at it was it was a necessary evil. Because if he wanted to become Knight of One to take Japan over, or better yet, just to get some changes happening then he has to be close to the highest person in the land to get them to allow him to do that sort of thing because he wanted to work within the system. So because that was Suzaku's mindset going in, we're not going to discuss if it worked or not, that's that's a whole other topic, but because that was his mindset going in, I don't see why being overly loyal to the Imperial family was a problem. Again, you have to look objectively and think, take a step back and think about why he was doing these things to begin with and then try to rationalize it. The problem with this point is one they don't bring up the actual issue with being loyal to the family instead they discuss like his motivations being flimsy how he killed Lelouch apparently I don't remember that happening but uh and then uh destroyed civilian lives for Britannia which again if we're talking about Flair Warhead you can go fudge off for the 15th time you could sort his whole article in one sentence basically he joined Britannia he killed people he was trying to protect and he betrayed his best friend oh and Flair Warhead Flair Warhead Flair Warhead that's it that's the whole article, like, in one sense. And they scratched out the 10 points. You've got to be kidding me. Talk about a reach. Uh, number three, you fired the Flare Warhead. I don't even care what they say here because, well, all right, well, let's read it really quickly. Firing the Flare had to be the worst thing Zaku ever did. It was one of the most hypocritical moves he ever made in Kogias. He claimed he wanted to protect Japanese lives, but seeing that goal went out the window when he was pitted against a childhood friend, largely due to his own actions. Okay. Um, Firing such a massive hud destructive weapon per boob, just like was not truly invest interest in saving people's lives. If he was, he was very delusional about how to do so. All right, let's 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 just do this one more damn time. Suzaku fired the flea because the Gias command Lush gave on him, or used on him, made him want to live. We know that the Gias command makes people go against their very nature. That's why Euphemia killed Japanese people despite wanting to save them. Which, by the way, okay. Suzaku supported the SAS, uh, the Special Ministry Zone of Japan, to help the Japanese people. Okay? Okay. Just wanted to point that out. So, if he wanted to, if he hated Japanese lives, why would he have done that? Okay? That's that's the first thing. So now, second point. Because Luz used the Gias Am to live, he only fired the Flea because the Gias effect took a hold of him. When Khan was about to wipe him out, he was like, this is my redemption. He was about to die. He accepted his death. He was never going to fire the Flea. He told Yuffie, and now Yuffie, Nina, he was never going to do it. He told Lush, I got the weapon. Please, you know, let's not have this conflict. All right? So him firing the Flea was not his fault. Okay? I will be on that hill to the very end. Such crap. He is not a hypocrite in this respect because he never tended to use it. Now... It's funny it says protect Japanese lives, but let's be real here. He killed Britannians too, right? Because they were in the Tokyo settlement as well. Come on, guys, really? He killed both sides. The flay attack wasn't directed towards Japanese people, Britannian people, whoever. Australian, Chinese. It was focused on just people. It wasn't like he fired it to kill. Like It, it made it seem like Zaku specifically fired at the flay at this time to kill Japanese people. That is a horrible framing of what happened. He brought the flare to specifically end the conflict, which I've said for the gosh darn, I don't know how many times I ran this video, but 
that's all he was trying to do in every single situation he jumped into. And the conflict. Okay. And the other thing is still like largely due to his own actions. Well, first of all, he went to join, he went to meet up with Lelouch. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Do you mean because he joined Bertrand to begin with? Did he mean because of when they joined up in turn 17? I don't know what, what they're referring to exactly. That's a very strange claim. I guess because he didn't join Zero at the time, which kind of made sense, kind of didn't make sense. It just depends how you look at stuff. I don't know. I, my, this is such a stupid point. People need to get over this crap, okay? You know who's responsible to play a warhead? Schneisel. He funded it. He manipulated Nina to fire it. He fudged up with Suzaku and, and Lelouch, so Suzaku ended up firing the Flay Warhead. He's the one responsible for this crap, not Suzaku. Stop blaming it on him. Leave the man alone. Number two, Euphemia's memory. Okay, how the hell did he betray Euphemia's memory? I, I can't wait to find this one out, uh, to read this one to find out. Euphemia's demise was one of the saddest moments of Kokias. Okay, last one I said was unfortunate, so there you go. At least they've improved their words there. Lelouch's Gias powers were too much and, and too misused. Too misused. What a horrible sentence. Who wrote this crap? I thought my articles were bad. Jesus Christ. And they caused her to go on a killing spree, ending the lives of many innocent civilians. Is that Suzaku's fault too, by the way? Is it his fault they died? I know I'm being hyperbolic, but like, oh my god. Eventually, Lucha had to give the order to have her killed, um, even though it was his own fault. What does that have to do with anything? Like, we are one paragraph into this point, and you're just talking about Malouche using his geos on Euphemia. See why these articles are garbage? If you're gonna make a, like, what a waste of existence to, to put this article. It says nothing about anything. Dezaku resolved to kill Zero for this. Eventually he does. But not before being extremely wishy-washy about it, as was Nina. And jumping from side to side. On top of that, he did not feel Euphemia's last wish. So you're mad. So you're saying, okay, let's, 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 let's be clear here. You are saying, because Zaku didn't kill Lelouch, therefore the fans were angry at him because it betrayed Euphemia's memory. So you're saying... Let's go up to the very top. That this event that made the fans angry made the fans angry your boss is awkward because he didn't follow through with it? Are you serious? My voice like just went up three octaves there. Like what? Oh my goodness. Considering he helped the Luge bring peace to the world, I think you female would be pretty happy with that. Just saying, right? Her wish was for people to smile and stop fighting and love each other. Isn't that what the Zero Requiem accomplished? He also worked with Lelouch to, like, erase the memory of the Prince's Massacre from people's minds. Like, I'm not saying it worked, but, like, and if he was last wish. Are we talking about go back to school, keep going, right? Because I didn't get a chance to finish. So he didn't, he didn't finish school? Is that what you're talking about? Like, again, you don't bring specifics. This article is just, is so bad. My God. These people stop writing articles about Kogi. I swear to Mother... To everything stop writing these articles this is so bad i'm wow okay let's just move on I... what <laughs> are you serious he killed lelouch fans are not upset about this because lelouch wanted to die it was part of the plan okay is azaku just like appeared out of like thin air and shot him in the head okay fine you got a point there also did you just say let's go back here okay you said that Suzaku, like again contradictions oh, holy contradictions batman you said here he was going to kill Zero, but he does not, and that pissed off fans. Now you're saying he killed Lelouch, and that pissed off fans. Then you're saying here he betrayed Lelouch, and that pissed off fans. Which is it? Is it because he didn't do it, or he did do it that pissed off fans? You can't even stay consistent with your own points. Wow, oh my goodness. While Lelouch proved himself to be an anti-hero who would do terrible things and commit momental acts of violence. What article is this, by the way? Oh my god, fudge, fudge you guys. For what he deemed was the greater good. Watching him die at the end of Zaku was both fitting and frustrating. Why was it frustrating? Okay, let's see. While Lucia's death was poignant and hugely impactful moment of series, fans were not happy with Zaku for doing it. Are you serious? It was so poetic because Suzaku had to take on the mantle of Zero. He gave his whole life. Zaku is dead at this point. He died in the last conflict. His, he has a tombstone. He died as Suzaku and became Zero. It was so beautiful. He passed the torch to him. The same sword that sent them to battle was the same sword that killed Lelouch. Why were people not having Suzaku doing it? Literally, the entire Zero Requiem was Suzaku's redemption story. Even people who hate the guy cannot deny that during that part, everyone loves Suzaku with Lelouch. That's what people wanted from like day one when they watched the show, okay? Get the hell out of here with this. In the end, the rivalry between the, the two former friends, actually, I think they're friends at this point, but whatever, were too much for either one to overcome. And while it was a dynamic way in the series, it certainly did not make Suzaku more likable. Now, I will say, 
I'll try to be friendly here. Some of the people who liked Belouche who found out about the record were not happy with Zaku did it. There's a manga that shows not only I'm not happy about what happened. I think it's Resurrection. She, he takes the helmet off and she sees it and she kind of freaks out. And she's a little upset about it. But I assume since you referenced the fans many times in this article that what you're referring to when it comes to not ru ruining likability is because of, or in, this article's hurt my head. I can't even get a point out here. What I was trying to say was, I assume when you say likability, you're referring to the fans liking Suzaku, not the characters around the story. I assume that's what you meant, okay? So if that was the case, I don't know many people who were upset that Suzaku was the one that killed Lelouch. It had to be him, okay? It had to be him. No, well, because no one else could dodge bullets. No, because it's like, it makes sense. The two that, that kind of the people, like, there's irony in it. There's so much good writing behind it. Like, I, I've seen people arguing against Zero Requiem, and they make good points. This is not one of them. This is so stupid. This whole article is dumb. Let me summarize it for you in a couple points, okay? First, he betrayed Lelouch, and that pissed off fans. He didn't kill Lelouch, that pissed off fans. But then he killed Lelouch, and that pissed off fans. But then he didn't kill Lelouch. I don't know. He betrayed the Britannia. He joined Britannia for some reason. We never know why. His motivations are weird. We don't know why. He used the flag, which was awful, because he wouldn't kill innocent people, but he did anyways. There's no, like, context or nuance. He just used it. And he killed his dad for some reason. He killed, he caused so much destruction to everyone. He hunted out civilians like an animal. You know, he targeted Japanese civilians specifically. He took his Lancelot out and he just murdered them on the, on the streets. That's what he did uh, in the story. You see how stupid that sounds? That's his article in a nutshell. I, I like don't have any more things to say about it. It's wow. You know, you take a month. I have to take month breaks from, from reading the articles, not because I got better content I'm working on, which is always true. But, like, mentally, I just can't wrap my hand around that someone actually put this together, okay? And like I said in the very beginning, Suzaku does plenty of things that are worthy of putting on this list. And they brought up two that I thought were valid, which was being too loyal to the Empire and also betraying Lelouch in that... Well, not betraying him, that's wrong. Sending him to Charles. Those were two good points. The rest thing they brought here, garbage. There are other things you could bring up. And, uh, by the way, um, let me know in the comments what things Suzaku did... They ruin his like ability, actual things besides the the two that were in this article. Because there's plenty of things he did that might have pissed off people. For example, the way he handles Colin, right? He was, he was using the uh, the refrain on her. That was a scene that pissed off a lot of people. That could have been brought here, my God. But no, we had to reiterate the same point four or five times over. If you guys have done the video and you dealt with my ramblings, I really appreciate that. This was a hard one to go through, as you can see. Give me things Zaku did that made that made you like him, not hate him. Stop the damn hate, CBR. And then more importantly, um, you know, like the video, subscribe, obviously. And as I always say, the world is not a dark place. And tomorrow will be a good day. Unless CBR keeps making articles like this, then that day will never come. Anyways, thanks for watching. Suzaku, I know how you feel, but... Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <gasps>